good morning to everyone welcome back to our social science class in this class we are going to see the civics point in our revision series for today 6th feb 2021 we are going to see the upcoming points in the civics tool so all the revision videos are very important please go through it very properly chapter number 4 key elements of a democratic government 6 feb 2021 we are going to see in the revision series fourth chapter of civics which is speaking to us the key element of democratic government in our previous class we had seen about the chapter number 3 what is government in that already we had seen about the factors features related to democratic government so now we are going to see about the key elements of democratic government so i request you please focus it and do the revision part very properly at the last we are going to summarize the question answers of this chapter so please continue with me so in this chapter you will read about some of the key elements that influence the working of a democratic government these include people's participation and the resolve of conflict and equality and justice so here we are going to see the basic key features of democratic government india and south africa so we are going to see about one of the story of south africa so you can observe this chapter already we had studied so you are knowing about the story of maya south africa is the country that has people of several race these are black people who belong to south africa white who came there to settle and indian who came as a laborer and trader maya naidu an 11 year old south african girl living in the town of johannesburg was helping her mother to clean up her old boxes at the time she found a scrapbook full of pictures and newspaper and articles there were many pictures of young school boy of around 15 years of age when she asked her mother who the boy was she told that she was called as hector peterson so what was the story of hector let's check out he had been shot by the police maya was shocked and surprised why she asked her mother explained that south africa was earlier governed by the apartheid law on the basis of the skin tone the people used to discriminate each other black and white this apartheid law apartheid means separation on the basis of race south african people were divided into white and black indian and color races according to the law these races were not allowed to mingle with each other to live near each other or even to use the common facilities so already children you are knowing about the story of mahatma gandhi was also suffered with this apartheid law when he was having the first class ticket but he was thrown out of that because of the skin tone the skin color maya could not believe her ears maya's mother sounded angry when she spoke about life under apartheid she told maya that in those days hospitals were separated and so were the ambulance the ambulance mean for white people would always be well equipped while one mean for black people was not so it shows the discrimination between the people how the white people were discriminating the black people there were separate buses trains and even the bus stop were different from the black and the white people there was a wide gap division between the society the people living there non whites were not allowed to vote the best land in the country was reserved for the white people and the non whites had to live in the worst available land thus the black and colored people were not considered to be equal to whites one black township was south western township south Hector Peterson left here and he and his classmates joined the protest against learning and right language 
So the Africans language in the school. There was a language that the white spoke at uh, and the other school student were being forced to learn this language but they wanted to learn their own language and the language was Zulu. So Zulu was the language. The South African police beaten up the protest massively and shot at the crowd. One of the bullets killed the hacker. This was on 16 June 1976. The African National Congress, a group of the people who laid the struggle against apartheid and their most well-known leader, Nansin Mandela, fought the apartheid system for several years. Finally, they succeeded and in 1994, South Africa became a democratic country in which people of all the races were considered equal. So finally, children, we are seeing about the story of the apartheid. Let us now understand what a democratic government means to all by seeing the topic participation. Why do we have regular election? You are. You have already read in the previous chapter that the people are taking or making decision in a democracy by the process of election and their representatives are taking decision on behalf of them. In doing so, it is assumed that they will keep in mind and the voices and the interests of the people. Here we are seeing the key element of democratic government about the participation of the people. In forming the government and in working of the government and taking the decision for their welfare. All governments are elected for fixed period. So in India, the period is of five years. Once elected, the government can stay in power only for that period. If they want to continue to be in power, then they have to be re-elected by the people. So this is a moment when people can sense their power of a democracy. In this way, the power of government gets limited by regular election. So the public participation is very important in the process of election. And regular interval of the election will make the government to get limited power. Other ways of participating. So what is the other way of participating? Elections are usually held once in a five year. Besides voting, there are other ways of participating in the process of government. So what are they? Let's check out. So people participating by taking an interest in working of the government and by criticizing it when it's required. In August 2005, when a particular government increased the money, people had to pay for electricity people expressed their disapproval by very sharply. They took out rallies and also organized the signature campaign. So what happened? The government tried to explain and defend its decision but finally listened to the people opinion and withdraw the increase. The government has to change its decision because it is responsible for the people and the government is although working only for the people. See here how the people are marching and doing the protest. There are many ways in which people can express their views and the, make the government understand that actions are not good for them. And they can do dharnas, rallies, strikes, signature campaign or etc. Things that are unfair and unjustice are also brought forward newspapers, magazine and TV also play a role in discussing government issues and responsibility. So here we are going to see about how the mass media is also playing an important role for discussing the role and responsibilities of the government and different different issues. While it is true that a democracy 
allow people to participate it is also true that not all the section of the people are actually able to do so another way for people to participate is by organizing themselves into social movement that seek to challenge the government and its functioning so here we are observing the participation of the people in other way so member from the minority community like dalit adivasi women and others are often able to participate in this manner if a country peoples are alert and interested in how the country is run the democratic character of the government of that country will be strong so here by the equality by giving the equal opportunity to each and every member by leaving the caste creed sex and all so we are going to understand about whether it is men women dalit or from the upper caste whomsoever the people belonging to whichever reason and religion are equal so the democratic government is going to become more stronger so the next time we see a rally wind through the street of our city and towns and village we should pause to find out and what the rally is about who is participating in that and what was the protest about this will help to give us a sense of how our government works so by doing this so we can clearly understand about the role and responsibility and functioning of the government and as well as what is our duty and role in that need to resolve conflict so in my story as you have read about how the conflict can often lead to a violence and death because one group decide that it is all right to use the force use force to prevent the other group from protesting conflicts occur when the people of different culture religion regions or economic background do not get along with each other that means they will not mingle up with each other or when someone or some among them feel that they are discriminated against this you have seen in the story of hector they want to learn the language zulu but they were not allowed people may use violent means to settle their differences these lead to fear tension among others living in that area and the government is responsible for helping to resolve these type of conflicts moving further to see how the government is resolving the conflict let us read about some of the conflicts in the society that the and after that we will see about how the government role is important in resolving them religious celebration and so on lead to conflict for example the root of process takes may be lead to conflict the government particularly the police may play an important role in getting representative of concerned community to meet and try to arrive at a situation at times there is fear that violence may erupt and the people throwing stone or trying to disrupt other processes the police be responsible for ensuring the violence does not take place so how the government is resolving the conflict among the people rivers too can be a part of this type of conflicts between the states so you are already knowing about the water disputes between the karnataka and tamil nadu related to kaveri water dispute the water stored in krishna raja sagara dam in karnataka is used for education irrigating a number of district and for meeting the needs of the city of bangalore the water stored in mittur dam in tamil nadu is used for the crop in the delta region in the in that state so these type of issues are coming and how the government is playing an important role to resolve this all issues a conflict arise because both the dams are on the same river the downstream dam in tamil nadu can only be filled when up if water is released from the upstream one located in karnataka therefore both the states cannot get much water as they needed for the people in the state this lead to conflict the central government has step in and see that the fair distribution is worked out for both the state 
okay how the role of central government is there to resolve the conflict between the two states also related to the water issues which is a common point and very essential for the life of the people moving further to see the next equality and justice one of the key idea of a democratic government is it the commitment to equality and justice equality and justice are the inseparable the earlier practice of untouchability is now banned by the law so the government already banned the untouchability this group of the people were denied education transport or medical facility or even the chance or of offering prayers in that we are knowing the name of dr bhim rao ambedkar whom already we had studied in our previous chapters and many others like him realize that such practice must not continue and that justice can be only be achieved when people are treated equally the government also recognize this and make special provision for the groups within the society this all about means about that the equality is very important in our country whether it may be boy or a girl there should be equality whether it's belonging from any caste religion area or so on so this is the approval and disapproval is being expressed here you can see that those who are having the textbook you can go through in that now we are going to see about the question answers of this chapter this part which i told you this you please see it and read it properly question number 1 how would maya's life be different in south africa today as we have seen in the story of maya there was no equal rights for the black and white there was discrimination right so how maya is enjoying because in 1994 the country is now democratic so let's see the answer so the answer for you is maya's life would be different in south africa today in the following manner she can use road buses and railway trains as other do without any discrimination she can attend the hotels and restaurant she can use hospital and am ambulance as others do she can walk in the parks freely she has no fear of police so all this point you can write in your own words those who did already these question answers in the notebook just revise is for the preparation of annual examination moving toward the next question what are the ways in which the people participate in the process of government so let's check out yes people participate in the process of government through the following various way by taking interest in the working of government first by criticizing the government on the various unpopular issues second by taking out rallies third by holding signature campaign fourth by opposing various unpopular resolution bill issues in the state legislature and parliament through their representative so by this all points we can understand about how the people are participating in the process of government in various ways by showing their interest by criticizing the government by doing dharnas rally signature campaign and by opposing if there is unpopular bill issues or resolution is made why do you think we need the government to find the solution to many disputes or conflicts if government will not be there there the quarrel and disputes is going to be increase and there is a loss of life and huge damage to the property so the government is very important for us we need the government to find the solution to many disputes and conflict because of the following here the disputes and the conflict block the way to the progress that's why we need the government to look into this matter they often turn violent and cause the damage to the property and the life of the people the government has to compensate people who are killed wounded and whose properties are destroyed in the violent way crores of rupees are spent on the communities and the commission and the attention of the government are diverted towards the welfare matters so dear cadets please look 
all these points very properly. What are the actions does the government take to ensure that the people are treated equally? So here the points are there. Already we have seen in the points, it makes law and enforces them to abolish all sort of dis discrimination. And all these points already we have discussed in our regular class. Please see this point and go through it. Read through the chapter and discuss some of the key ideas of a democratic government and make a list of it. So here is the point are there. So equality and justice, ban on untouchability, no discrimination, boys and girls are equal and no discrimination against anyone. Lastly, I want to thank each and everyone for watching this video. Please be safe and secure at your home. Jai Hind to one and all.